Do you want a meal or do yours today? Good morning. <laughs> Don't mind us. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, do you want a meal or do yours today? <laughs> right. Let's make sure everything's okay. He's a little wonky, I don't know why. Oh, shit. Right, okay. Well, how do I get that one going? Move this up a little bit. Move you up a little bit. Okay. Make sure we've got enough room for everyone to see. Okay. Just one. Do -do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get your camera angle sorted in a minute, everyone. Good morning, Christine. I'm just uh, fiddling with the camera here. It winds me up when it's wonky, but never mind. Okay. There we go. I think that'll be okay. Good morning, Andrine. How are you? Have you cooled down? Just need to pop over and sort the laptop out for Brian because it's doing something weird. Faffing. Yes, it is, and isn't it? That's good. Yeah, it did get very hot the other day and yesterday. Yeah. That was so lovely about having our little stroll along the beach because there's a nice breeze, and then you can cool off when you go under the trees. Now, for some reason, the phone isn't showing me any comments. No, same here. What a pain. Let's come out. Screen again. Right, let's see if that's okay. Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Donna. Morning, everyone. How's Bertie? Right, I think everything's okay now. Fingers crossed. Touch oh, wood. Donna, I love your little chihuahua. Bertie's so cute. Just waiting to see if any more comments come up, which would be helpful. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, James, trying to look for you on Clash of Games. Ah. Make sure you tell her it's like it's always live on. Yeah, all the lives are on this one, unless it's for something special like a challenge or. Something or other. The, the reason being is um, obviously because the group is a closed private group and the Julie Hickey Designs page is public so it can reach more people and also it can be uploaded to YouTube. So, but no, I'm not getting any comments on here. So, Brian will have to, uh, yeah. will have to nudge me. Okay, so this morning we are having a little go at box frames because I had quite a few squirreled away so I thought right I might as well use them um, and we were talking about techniques, favourite techniques the last time and I said I quite like doing painty things so that was also the reasoning behind this. Let's just bring this one over, I'll bring it further up for you, have a little look. 
So we've Jane. got lots of layers here. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Jane. Lots of different la layers, a few techniques and some lovely painty loveliness. Okay, as always, I will go through all the comments after we've finished. Um, I shall pop the materials list and the instructions onto the file section in the group. Um, yeah, so let's uh, go through what materials I shall be using today. So I've uh, used the Mary's Hearts and Florals stamp set to make the main flower. I used the Dotty About You stamp and the blooming lovely stamp set to make my own washi tape and to add in some doodly features on here we've also used the circle medley alphabet stamp set and die set together because i'm obsessed with it um, it matches in so well with obviously it's got a circle theme you could do equally as well do this with squares that would be no problem at all We've got the circle layers and frames die set for the larger circles and then the dinky dies just for the middly circle there with the uh, the book page on. Okay, I've also used the Dotty About You stencil to draw around and fill in and add some more doodly details. <laughs> We've used the Backgrounds 2 stencil for the same reason. Um, I've got the box frame, obviously whatever you've got, your sizes will be different for what you're doing. Um, I've using some clear acetate, some old inky or even painty backgrounds um, to stamp onto and work with. We've got uh, book pages from hardbacks not necessarily from paperbacks because paperbacks can be recycled but hardbacks can't so if you do find any in charity shops you can rescue them and make them into something else i shall be using a bit of cardboard to add some layers um i'm using some plain washi tape so i can stamp onto it and then you'll also need the usual bits and bobs uh, stamp platform. I'm using First Fine Clear Nocturne, Stays On. Um, I'm using a ruler, some acrylic paints, a small brayer, some paint pens, black alcohol marker, black micron pens, uh, scissors, glue, and a glossy accents as well, and a die cutting machine. So if we make a start, let's move that to one side for a completely different colourway for this one. So let's open this one up to start with. I'd actually use this frame for something else, so oh. I'll be recycling this one. Morning, Joe. How are you, Joe? Hope that back's okay. these we can get from practically everywhere now can't we this one is really handy because it has let's show you um, has this part hi Anne I'm sorry but my screen isn't showing me any comments so uh, I'm having to let Brian do that for me Vanessa hi Vanessa okay so you will want basically to cut your book page and a piece of clear acetate to the same size. Bring this over That's as here. Positive. So normally you get these little little backing pieces in with the frame. You want it to do it the same size as, as this. Okay, move those over to one side. Send everything flying. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, stamp out the washi tape because even though I'm using stays on, it 
might still take a little bit of time just to dry ready for us to handle it okay so what i've got is a spare piece of uh, acetate you can see i've done it before this just makes life a lot easier pop this into here get a piece of uh, plain washi tape You could also use uh, plain masking tape as well for this if you wanted to. Then we can line this up on the grid still so it's easier to line up the stamp. That will hold that in place nicely. Okay, let's line this stamp. the circles from the dotty about you set. There we go. Start in the middle. I'm going to place the bottom edge along one of the lines there. And don't worry too much about this because it's a piece of washi tape and it's a piece of mixed media and it doesn't have to be precise in fact. The less precise it is, the better, probably. Okay, so I've got my stays on. Got a good squidge down. Now this will come out lighter. As you can see, but this really doesn't matter. It's all about the texture and the pattern. up again if you've got that bottom line we can work from and then just move it over so, ink it up again a stays on for this i mean it depends on the washi tape actually this is quite a shiny one um some of the matte ones might work a little bit better if you haven't got stays on because in the past i have used the ordinary versafine and then like set it with clear heat embossing um, but it does have a tendency to peel off so stays on is, uh, is the best bet. Okay, just do one more. That will be plenty. As you can see, it's not a perfect stamping, but we don't want it perfect. It's lining up nicely, but uh, okay. actual stamping itself is is blotchy, but that's. That's good. That's what we're aiming for. Okay. Can you apply to this just asked? Mm -hmm. uh, Pardon her ignorance, but what is stays on? <laughs> stays on. It's permanent. You can use it on non-porous surfaces. Like um, we use this on the acetate. It's brilliant for to stamp on acetate on to anything shiny like this washi tape is um doo -doo -doo. yeah here we go it's a fast drying solvent ink it's not water based so once it's on it's on well, it's not going problem, anywhere the problem, <laughs> it, smells like it does have a smell like almonds <laughs> and it will <laughs> as you can see it will stain your stamps but that is, it doesn't do any damage to your stamps at all. So don't worry about that, that's fine. Okay, down. Just a <laughs> oh, I, do, I do hate not being able. 
to see the car. <laughs> in Facebook. Ah, okay. Oh, well, I've got to bring the other stamps in over. Yeah, so I know it smells <laughs> lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to give this time to dry off now before we start handling it. Because although it pretty much dries instantly, especially with the weather being a bit sticky at the moment, I don't really want to get covered in uh, too much ink. Pop that down there for now. Right, I've got to bring me the other stamp over. Can you grab it for us, Chloe? Yeah. It's um, it's up on the shelf. It's Mary's. I forgot to put it back in the box. I've just been reorganising all my storage before the dreaded craft room clean. No. That's it. Thank you very much. That's the one. Okay. So I've already gone ahead and stamped and cut this out, also to give the ink time to dry and uh, what have you. And to cut down on the time because this one's a bit more involved you will need some inky or painty backgrounds to stamp onto so that it's already pre-colored if you like um, you need to stamp the heart in one color and then cut that out on the line on the stamped line and then stamp the entire flower onto another piece and I'm going to show you how I lined this up and masked it for uh, for stamping that so a bit of plain card here okay, this is Mary's Hots and Florals so we'll start with the heart first Side of it, so I'm just going to use ordinary Versafine for this, that'll be fine. A little press down, give that a chance to sink into the card. There we go, beautiful. I think she's doing dinner. I'm not sure what she's doing. Okay, so now we're going to add the stem. So I'm just going to line that up with the bottom there of the heart. Okay. Pick that up. And then all I'm going to do is post it note. Makes life easier. I can just stick the corner into there and then we can stamp this down <laughs> you can use uh, you can use your masking tape there we go good morning hi from a slightly cloudy morning in Portugal Oh, Portugal. Is it going to stay cloudy or uh, is it going to improve? So does that mean we're having better weather than you over here, Dawn? <laughs> well, who knows at the moment, eh? And then we're going to pop the leaf. What I'm calling it is a sprig, but it's now going to be the leaves to come up and line that up. With the edge here of the stamp just in between there so. and again we can just use the side of this Uh, 
No, getting better in an hour. She oh. reached 30. That's good. Later today. Oh. Oh. There we go. So now we've got our leaf added as well. So that was just to show you uh, how I masked that off to create the, the tall flower. So we get to work on the one I've already got prepared. As I said, I've cut all the way around this one. I've given this a little border all the way around the edge. And we're going to glue, kind of like we were doing with the paper piecing. I think these originally were some brush -o backgrounds that I've done. There we go, just to make it look a bit different. So what is now a flower head is a different colour. I've got all coordinating colours to use. And they are from the same pieces that I've cut my circles out of. So one large circle, medium one, which is the same as that, and that was from that. I've got one that I've cut out of book page, but I've also backed it onto card just to give it some strength. With that one, you also get the little frame. Um, you'll need to, to keep this one because we're going we're gonna to colour that and add that onto the design as well. And then another little bright one for the top. Okay, and it's at this point, if you want to add any details onto this you can okay. actually leave that to dry what I will do first is put my brayer ring on I think now I've cut my book page to size let's decide which side we want doesn't really matter a lot I suppose but let's go for that one so the old book page. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> Let's just pop the lid back on the glue because I can guarantee it will dry up. Okay, so I've just got a small brayer. I've got some um, coordinating colours. So here we go. Lovely colours. Okay, I've got the studio light paints here, which are lovely. I think Hazel's still got these if you're after some. So I usually start with the, the darkest of the colours first. I'm just going to put a small blob down on the mat. Up a little bit and just come in here and there. still get like the opacity so you can see through it as well which is nice so you don't lose that clean that as we go so I don't get too mucky I spent ages yesterday cleaning my brayer because it had gotten so uh, yeah, caked up with paint it was really sticky okay we'll just give this a quick blast oh it's not on But it's not on. Uh oh. There we go. Just 
just a little blast. Acrylic dries really quickly anyway. This will try and stop the, uh, the colours from creating mud. So once you've dried one, it's not really going to mix with anything else. The next colour will just lay on top of it. Slightly lighter pink colour. Let's give that a little dry off just in case. Just a low heat. drying anything pick it up and uh, move it away from your from the surface whatever you're working on otherwise you create condensation underneath and it just uh, just makes it wetter it doesn't actually dry effect. My assistant has gone off and left me so I'm sorry if anyone's commenting because I have absolutely no idea. a lovely bright yellow to this. It really helps to uh, like enliven your work. Um, and it seems to have a completely different effect to if you wanted to add white to it. Because white can end up being a little bit draining on a project. But the yellow has got that zing to it will help lift everything and it really helps to uh, to draw your eye in splotch there with yellow i'm just going to add in some thinner stripes just picking up a little bit there as it was okay so we can leave this now to dry off before we do anything else onto it okay so as i was saying if you want to at this point you can add in some color um or even like i'm going to do today is just add in some black so i've got some micron pen Thick that one. Let's go for mm, that one. Might be okay. No, I've been I've been without any. Okay. So if you want to, 
do we can just add in some colour here and there <laughs> deserted me Joe Choosing, choosing a lovely pillow. Great background. Oh, thank you. Auntie Jo, what oh, gorgeous love that pillow. Thank you. Why do we call you Auntie Jo? She's not I don't know. I know. Auntie. She's not easy. <laughs> I'm just going to do a few of these leaves. The original one I did, I used yellow, but uh, I think we'll go for a more edgy, edgy feel for this one. I think John don't want to come home. No, oh, don't blame you. Okay, what are the inks again and where can I buy them? Are you talking about paints, Elizabeth? Which inks are you after? Was it the, um, the stays on? Coloured inks, or oh, she's talking about paints. You never use coloured inks, did you? No, the, the paints are um, studio light. They're the Art by Marlene range. They're really nice and um, and a good price as well. And uh, the last time I checked, Hazel had still got them in stock, so worth a little look, I think. Just do some of these hearts as well. She says hearts. You are very welcome. Okay. So you're going to have to do these in the black, of course, or even colour them at all if you want to leave them. You do whatever you would like. Okay, so I think we'll leave that there for now. So then we can start work on our circles. So what I did, let me find this so I don't make a mess of my mat. Instead of cutting out another piece of card to get a black, black frame, I'm just going to use the chisel nib on the alcohol marker and just cut like that in. <laughs> Then I haven't had to cut into another piece of black card. We seem to eat black card in this house. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anyone else has a lot of <laughs> black dip? Oh, all these scraps of black card. Done. There we go. That will uh, do us for what we need it for. And I'm also going to give each of the circles a little black edge this doesn't have to be neat don't worry about it if you go over it's absolutely fine we're just going to edge it bring that up a little bit all the way around and we're tying everything in together with the black may bleed a little bit on whatever card or paper you've used but that's fine yeah Vanessa eats black card too yeah yeah it's all about the name isn't it because I prefer my own name on black card than club card yes I love black anyway might have guessed And again, this saves trying to create a border 
a card or anything so we've got an instant border now all the way around the edges going to do is bring in the piece of acetate before we carry on with the circles so that we've got time to uh, to dry this off so I'm just going to pop the acetate onto here and line everything up first so we can position it so just line that in there we'll move this one in first and don't forget that some of the edges will be covered up. And then we can get a rough idea of where we're going to place this. We will lose some of that off the bottom, but that's fine. I'm going to use glossy accents to stick this down because it will grab a lot quicker. Just a very small amount so it doesn't goo much. Straight onto the acetate. So we've got the curve of that leaf kind of mirroring the curve of the circle. to one side now and the reason for doing this will become clear <laughs> let's just snip a bit of excess away A little, little bit of a chance to dry off now. And now we can start doodling onto our circles. Okay, so the first one, I kind of did a stripey design so we'll go for the micron pens again i'm going to go for a really really fine one so it's one of those where it's uh, it's almost there doesn't have to be exact so i don't think you've got to do this perfectly but you really haven't just in case we don't want anything to bleed and smudge that's it we'll bring this up because it is such a fine fine line if you can see that on there i hope you can okay now you won't need to do all of this so if you decide which part you're going to see you can that one I'm just going to put some more in with a ruler me too Joel Joel loves circles <laughs> they're the best aren't they yeah especially when it comes to doodling and then the rest I'm going to pop in freehand because I'm mad like that this is just to give you an idea of what angles they're going to go in at. Okay, the other line. 
some double lines if you wanted to, some wiggles, whatever you fancy, this is yours. <laughs> this is just going to be adding little bits of texture. giving the eyes something else to have a look at. Okay, we might need to add some more in. I'm going to leave that there before we move on. Because the next circle we add is going to be slightly offset towards the top there. So I can then just go in and do some around the edges. I'm going to use the stencils on this one to add some more circles. Because you can never have too many circles. So I've got the dotty about you. coming off of there this time. Do, do, do. And that one's too thick. Let's go for that one. So we'll draw around this. I'm going to have three of these in first. Those are, yeah. yeah. And I'm also going to use the backgrounds stencil. Yeah. I love that we've got all the different different sizes here. Somebody's disgruntled. I wonder what you mean, Jack. Disgruntled. Hmm. Oh, the pattern. <laughs> oh. Okay, you can see all of this. Okay. Some of these we might even cover up slightly, but. 
time. If we bring the next one in, we can check that. That'll be fine. Again, give this a little wipe. Just in case. And I'm going to colour some of these in. Just straight in with black. Using my alcohol marker. You could use paint, paint pens, even black gesso is quite uh, quite good for this. No, I don't like colouring with the stencil in place. Oh. Because you get the you get it covered. Shut up, Brian. <laughs> and then the other thing you could have done is um put some black paint or black gesso through it. Problem with, <laughs> problem with uh, alcohol markers is once they're on, they're on. Which is what we want most of the time. Yeah. There you go. And Ingo says, I use hand sanitizer to clean my stencils when I colour through them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and just to repeat like we did on there so that it matches up. I come in again with a scrap card. Just going to put in some lines to start with. Just to give me a rough idea, I'm going to fill those in. Whatever doodly things you like doing. Go with that. I know Joe is brilliant at uh, disentangling and everything. Just gone in with a fine one there, and I'm going to go to a slightly thicker one and go in between to give that a little different look. On that one. Oh, well, she could have smelly bit of paper pens. It smells nice with a sponge in the kitchen. Really. Can we add these in in between the lines we've just put down? Just to give us a slightly different look. As you can see, they're not at all straight. She always says the very time. The time for very collapsing. Yes, it must be. That's like Mark with his with his uh, feet. <laughs> yeah, just creating a little pinwheel. <laughs> you hit that one, then, Joe. So we'll glue this one on first. And we can finish our lines on it. Just using my usual glue. Mark loves it because 
just quiet when she puts it. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to offset it because I really like the look of that. If you wanted to, you could decorate this one first, glue it on, and then just do the lines all the way around the edge. Oh. Don't tell Mark that, Joe. Joe's just put, you know, just what I needed this morning, Brian. <laughs> so I'm just going to come in with the ones that are missing. Just in between oh, there. Yvonne, you need wavy lines. Yvonne's just put my lines will be will wavy and not lovely straight like yours. I don't know. Don't, well, you can't really see that close, but they're not, uh, Not at all. I'll bring it up in a minute. Oh, it doesn't matter, you see. This is the great thing about this kind of uh, artwork. It really doesn't need to be. You can do what you want to and how you want to. Sorry to spread I'm in my cabin packing orders and lost the Wi Fi. Oops. No problem, Julie. Quite understand. We definitely want those orders packed out. Dangling carrots, like we do. Okay, so our next layer, which we're not going to stick onto yet, will be onto here. And I just like to include that bit of book page because it will tie in with the background. So I'm going to use the dotty stamp. Just to add a bit of interest onto this one. What the dangling carrots was her job, do you think? <laughs> Very lovely carrots they are too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stamps back. So this time we're using the blooming lovely, which has got this really, really, really handy uh, little dot. And stamp it in this time. Just for something different. You could use the stencils if you wanted to. Can someone enlighten me please? What are the carrots you're going on about? Carrots? Dangling carrots. Teases. Huh? Like when you dangle a carrot in front of a donkey. Oh. Couple of these on. Yeah, you've got the old dangling carrots now. <laughs> it's a very lovely carrot. Come on there. It's just really another another way of showing what you can use with the products you've got really this mixing and matching all the different things dyes stamps stencils some of your favorite stamps are isn't it love this Come in with a pen again. I'm going to choose a slightly thicker pen this time. So, if anyone who wants to know, I'm using a 003, an 05, and a 12. They are. It's a pack of 10, isn't it? The Pigma Micron Secura. Just going to come in and randomly add some other little dots. 
shorts. Just go for it. Yeah, if I know swords, the secrecy. <laughs> he does know. A reference, if you want to, you can pop that on there for now. So you know, you might need some more. But that's fine. I'm going to go down to another size. I'm going to come in and do some little dots. Around a big circle. No. I haven't done it for quite a while until just recently, but I love using old book pages to create on. Like the flowers, what you know, pages. <laughs> little dots all over. That one, let's bring that up. You can add more, less, do some little dots all around, around the edge there if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Entirely up to you. Ah, right, okay. Elizabeth just asked about the micro pens. Are yes. they waterproof and are they weedproof? They are archival ink for wood. Ooh, I can't speak. Micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof fine lines. So there we go. There we go. Kind of secure. Now this one you might see a lot of it, but you can catch it. I'm going to go a bit random here. That just stays in place. I am literally going to freehand. Elizabeth, you haven't fled from me. No. No, I haven't had any problems with them. I was um, when I was drawing all those mandalas. They were brilliant. So. She said thank you. <laughs> not straight at all. <laughs> In no way. <laughs> In no way perfect, like but just that. wiggly, wiggly lines all around the edge, right. and that is one of the best ways of doing something. And then this time. Gonna come in. It's gonna do. So I'm gonna put some funky lines through there, and then with the bit thicker pen, you won't see a lot of this one, but it's uh, quite good to show you different doodlies. We're gonna come in. A little. Jagged splotches like that. That's a new word now, new technical term, yeah, a yeah. jagged splotch. There we go. That looks quite cool. This is good, just, you know, you can have ribbons, just say that I love the pink one. You can see so many different colours. Yes. Is this your uh, brushos? It was brushos, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've got a feeling I might, that was even because I've had these for so long. I think it was when I was putting the brushos onto a jelly plate. So we'll glue this one on top of this one now. Oh, you just said it's like little birds on the line. Yes. <laughs> that way this time. Let's make sure we've got our words straight. That could be annoying. another element ready to go and then what I did was out of some more of the, uh, the background card that I had I die cut the circles and then stamp them to make out my bloom sentiment so everything is then uh, coordinated. Pop 
those on in a little bit. Okay, so we need to start placing our circles. It's in there now, fixed in place. in place first over the top and I'm going to have a rough idea of where I want that to go Slowly. That's it. So we still want to be able to see enough of the, uh, the book page underneath. And all we need to do is trim this. You could stick that onto somewhere else. <laughs> you could indeed. I think I might do that, you know. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm feeling reckless. Do it. Just stuck it to my t shirt. <laughs> waste anything do we <laughs> this one we're going to place using cardboard because we've got enough room with it being a box frame to be able to lift this up so I might just trim that a little bit good old cardboard Concentrating. <laughs> I don't think we've got enough to. We've got enough to supply Auntie Joe. Everybody. We've got enough to supply Auntie Joe and what? Okay, we'll bring this one in again. Bring this up so I can see. I think I start calling her Joe our kid. <laughs> Gives us a nice bit of dimension as well. So place this back over the top again, see how we're going. Yep, that's I good. That. I like that. Just gonna clear everything there for a minute because I'm gonna do some splatting. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I've got a yellow Posca paint pen to pick up on the uh, the yellow highlights we've got already. And this is where I get everything covered apart from what I want to be covered. Let me keep that a good splodge. I know it's just gonna come. Looking at it from the wrist. Blotching done. Not too bad. Not too bad for me. <laughs> Just give this a little dry off. Again, lowest heat because it's acrylic paint in there, which obviously has plastics in there. You don't want it to bubble and go nasty looking. Okay. Obviously, if you want that look, then it's great. It's quite subtle, but it's all adding 
little bits of interest there. <laughs> I didn't go for black because I just think it looks a bit harsh and I wanted this to be something really colourful and, uh, and joyful okay so I'm going to take that uh, bit of the black frame that we had before just a bit of glue there around the edge just going to have it Touching on that circle, but coming off to the top there. Going to trim this off and these use the rest of it elsewhere. And again, we've got that circle there so we can have it come in from that one. And then that will make sense, hopefully. in our little sentiment obviously whatever you want to write on your picture Seagulls. Yes. Looking after the babies. Oh, don't worry, it's not me making funny noises. <laughs> what is it? I think there's seagulls practically everywhere in the country now, isn't there? It can be a pain, but I think it's something you get used to, Joe. Oh, I love seagulls. I'm just going to follow this right down. Coming from Manchester, all I had was pigeons. <laughs> getting there. Now we need to bring in that little piece of washi tape. Now they're making the long noise because the is so good. for that bit. Oh, 
not just what we always know when the weather is bad. The seagulls come inland. Ah. And they, they can hear tractors and combine harvesters around us. Yes. Yes, it must be very busy over uh, over your way. Okay, so now we can add in our lovely washi tape. Leave it there to bring the eye in to the sentiment. Another little bit at the top. great that we can make up our own washi tapes into here bring up so you can see okay this is just adding another another layer of pattern and design thank you And then we're going to pop some onto the acetate as well. So bring this in over the top. Use the other bit that we've got. Let's get rid of one straight edge. Let's tear that. Again, have a bit coming in here, and then the other bit, which we don't mind having a straight edge, can go on the bottom. Okay, so that's just going to cover where the bottom of the flower is, so that grounds the flower. We've got that bit there. This is the um, Joe lives. She lives in a village but surrounded by countryside mm -hmm. and lovely fields. Very lovely. One twenty three miles to the coast. Oh, lovely. Sounds lovely, Joe. Okay, so let's bring our frame back in. Can pop all the bits together now. All the three D bits will make sense, especially the acetate part. Okay, so I'm going to take that part out. If you can find a box frame with these, it will make a lot more sense. What have I done with the back? There we go. Put that back in as well. Okay, so the first piece to go in is the acetate and because it's on acetate this will kind of look like it's floating i kind of got the idea for that from people using rub-ons but because we haven't got any rub-ons i thought i might as well put that onto acetate and it might give the same kind of effect oh yeah <laughs> so On over the top. And this goes on top of there. Pop that back in to give it a bit of a sturdiness. Very welcome. Just something a bit different, isn't it? finished piece so we've got this bit here which instead of it having to be stuck to the glass as well which would be a bit of a nightmare to do and you would definitely see any glue that we use sticking it onto the back of the glass doing it onto the acetate acetate makes it so much easier lifts it away from the main 
decoration and of course we've also got the depth and dimension with the cardboard on there as well so bring this up for a closer look okay sorry about the reflections oh have you sat on the scale <laughs> Please, please, please give this a try, especially if you've got any box frames hanging about. It's just something so nice, something different to try. Um, if you haven't done any mixed media or anything before, this is a great introduction. Um, you could make a whole set of these, a, a trio of these would look beautiful on a wall. I mean, then you've got the, the chance to do whatever colour you would like to and uh, express yourself in... Uh, in your own unique way which is what it's all about thank you yes i will i'll get straight on after i've cleared up and uh, and everything so that's the two variations i definitely love love this one um there won't be a technique tuesday now for a little while because we are starting our major craft room <laughs> clear out <laughs> It has just gotten to the point where you can't really move about freely. <laughs> There's so much stuff in here. It's unbelievable. Um, we're going to change around. I'm going to make this desk that I'm on at the moment mine and not Brian's so that we're not constantly having to swap over when I do a live. Um, yeah, so everything is coming out. It's having a good clean reorganisation and I shall be sharing pics once it's done. So wish us luck <laughs> and I just wanted to let you all know that on Saturday we've got another swap coming up in the group crafty friends of Julie Hickey designs uh, we've done ATCs and that in the past and the three inches but this time we're going to do bookmarks I've got a couple here just to show you I've uh, stuck to the traditional size of two by six inches. Um, I just thought it would be something nice, something different, different to do a swap with. Um, and I know most people, I know there's like electronic books and things now, but most people still like to have a have a book book. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a few ideas there. I will be sharing them. Um, so that will start on Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and if you want to take part, you can add your name to the post on Saturday. I will partner everyone up and, uh, yeah, you can get swapping your little bookmark pieces of art. So I think that was everything I had to cover. We've got the, um, launch this week with Julie. So keep an eye out for that. You're going to love it. I know you are. <laughs> Dangling carrots. Um, so thank you ever so much for joining me today. Um, yeah, I will go back and check on all those comments. So yeah, sorry about that. Blame Facebook. Um, yeah, and I shall see you all very soon. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Uh, happy crafting. Thank you.